Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah alone and may peace and blessings be upon our messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and upon his family and his companions Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this episode, we have three chapters to get through from Shama'il al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Imam al-Tirmidhi. The first is what is mentioned with regard to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wearing his ring on his right hand. And from this is the hadith of Ali radiallahu an that his ring was worn on the smallest finger, the shortest finger of his left hand that his ring was worn on the smallest finger, the baby finger, of his left hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the hadith of Ali from Sahih Muslim, it is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade wearing the ring on the index finger and the middle finger. He forbade wearing the ring on the index finger and the middle finger the longest of the fingers. And his sunnah was to wear it on the small finger. So now we have the fingers divided into three groups. Forbidden to wear it on the index finger and the middle finger. The sunnah to wear it on the small finger. And it being permissible to wear on what they call the ring finger. The finger nearest to the little finger. And as for the thumb, the scholars disagreed over it with some of the scholars saying that the thumb is forbidden and some of them saying that the thumb is allowed and it's better to avoid than Allah Azza knows best. So we avoid the thumb. We're prohibited from the first two fingers, the index and the middle finger. The ring finger is permissible and the smallest finger is the sunnah. But as for the ring finger, it's permissible when the ring is not worn in a way of copying the disbelievers. But as for those people who wear engagement rings on their ring finger to copy the disbelievers, then this is prohibited by consensus of the scholars. As for a woman, she can wear the ring on whatever finger she wants. And this is a matter of agreement amongst the scholars that this forbidding of wearing the ring is for the men only. So the man may wear the ring on either of the last two fingers and the sunnah is the small finger and if he wears it on the ring finger he should not wear it on the side that is associated with the engagement ring and it's different in different countries but if you live in a country where the non-muslims celebrate their marriage by wearing it on the ring finger on a certain side then you mustn't wear it on that finger you mustn't wear it on that finger you must wear it on the other side finger that doesn't represent this issue of this belief that if you take off the ring it will ruin your marriage and this belief that the ring is a symbol of your marriage and that it's a bringer of luck for your marriage this is haram to copy and it's different in different countries in some countries they wear it on the ring finger on the left hand and in some countries they wear it on the ring finger on the right hand and in some countries they wear it on the middle finger and so on and so forth but as for if there is no comparison like they don't wear silver or something like that, then the ring finger in general is permissible for you to wear it on. And in the hadith of Ali radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu wore it on his left hand. As for the hadith of Abdullah ibn Ja'far, 
in Shama'il al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullahu ta'ala, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore his ring on his right hand. And al-Tirmidhi mentions another narration from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore his ring on his right hand. And so we say that the matter is a matter of ease, especially with a ring. Because you get sweaty and you get irritated, you take it off, put it on your other hand, no problem. The Prophet ﷺ would wear it on his left hand and the hadith is authentic and he would wear it on his right hand and the hadith is authentic in this as well. And so there is no harm in wearing on the left hand or wearing on the right hand in this matter, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we've mentioned with regard to the ruling of wearing it on the different fingers. Then At-Tirmidhi mentions the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet ﷺ took a ring of silver and he wore its bezel on the inside of his hand. Its bezel was written as Muhammadur Rasulullah, and he forbade anyone from taking the same. It is the one that fell from Mu'aqib in the well of Aris. So the Prophet ﷺ would not wear the bezel of the ring on the outside. On the outside. He would wear the bezel of the ring on the inside. We, he wore it on his small finger, he wouldn't wear the bezel of the ring here on the outside. He would wear the bezel of the ring on the inside. So it was close to his palm. So that when he was close his hand, you would just see a band. You wouldn't see the big bezel, you would just see a band. And when he opened his palm, you would see the bezel with written on it, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad on the first line, Rasul on the second line and the word Allah on the third line. And that is how he used to wear his ring Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as for Mu'iqib radiallahu an, he is Ibn Abi Fatima al-Dawsi radiallahu an, and he was the treasurer of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, from the Sabiqoon al-Awwaloon, from the early people to accept Islam. And he witnessed all of the battles of Islam radiallahu anhu arda. And then Imam Al-Tirmidhi mentions the narration that Al-Hasan and Al-Husayn radiallahu anhuma used to wear their ring on their left hand. And so whether you wear it on your left or whether you wear it on your right, this is a matter that is not a matter of concern and you may do either. And it seems that the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu suggest that he would do both salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. We come to the chapter of the turban of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And a turban is something that is wrapped around the head A piece of cloth that is wrapped around to cover the entire head So it is a piece of cloth and it is wrapped around to cover the entire head And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of his headgear Three primary things are narrated one that he would wear a turban with a cap. So a piece of material or some sort of cap. I didn't find a description of the cap in my research and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Whether it was similar to the caps that Muslims wear today or a little different. But some sort of material that would cover the crown of his head. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So that he would wear a turban over a, a cap. Or that he would wear a turban without a cap. Or that he would wear a cap on its own without a turban. And these three things are narrated from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regard to his headgear. That he would wear a turban with a cap underneath or something to cover the material to cover the crown of the head. Or that he would wear it without one just the turban, or that he would wear the cap on its own or the cloth piece to cover his head on its own, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, and that he would not wear a turban. But the Prophet sallallahu used to cover his head. And this is from the manners of the Arabs at that time, that they did not accept a man to leave the home without having his head covered. And this was true in many countries. Indeed, even in the UK where I come from, relatively recently, 
you're possibly only talking 100 years, 150 years, it would be considered unthinkable for a man to take off his headgear in public. And this was the way that the Arabs used to be. And that doesn't mean that wearing a cap is a sunnah. And the correct opinion regarding headwear is that it is the same as all of the issues of clothing. If you wear a head cover or you don't wear a head cover, there is no problem with either. There is no sunnah in wearing a turban. There is no sunnah in wearing a head cover or a cap necessarily. But if you do so out of the love of the Prophet ﷺ, then you're rewarded for the love of him. And if it is the standard in your country, then you should follow the standard in your country. And in many countries, it's the standard. We'll take a break and we'll talk more about the turban of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, after the break. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What would you recommend? Peace TV presents. What would you have to say about learning the wise way? What would you recommend us to take as career? After we pass our school, so what exactly we should do? What do you have to say about pursuing two fields together? Ideas brilliant. Strategy sustained. The best profession is a profession of a person who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is your interest. But the main aim should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic come educational formula to excel in your career. Watch Career Guidance. Every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause. The proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301 sort code 300083 swift bic code arayy gb22 please confirm your contribution at support at peace tv tv support peace tv the solution for humanity Disagree or disagree to agree. to agree. Dispute superstitions and refute the myth which is created around the word religion, which is misinterpreted, misconstrued, and misjudged. misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion. Wake up from delusion. And step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy. Reject or accept. Dispute or challenge. When caught in, crossfire. 
Misconceptions clarified, falsehood exposed, and truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're talking about the turban of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we said that the correct opinion regarding headgear is that there is no established sunnah regarding headgear, but that the Prophet sallallahu followed the customs of his culture that he lived in sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which a man had to cover his head. And if you live in a culture where a man does not have to cover his head, then you don't have to cover your head. And if you live in a culture where a man is expected to cover his head, then you should cover your head. And the matter is one where there is room for maneuver. And it's not a requirement for you to cover your head. As for the narrations about Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and other companions, criticizing the one who did not cover their head, then this applies to the culture they were in. Like the culture in England 150 years ago, where if a man went out without a hat, he was considered to be an improper person or an unsuitable individual. This is well known that people, men used to wear hats. But if there is a culture where men don't wear hats and it's not expected for you to wear a hat, then you don't need to wear a hat. Because this is like the ruling in all issues of clothing, the shoes, the sandals, the waist wrap, the rida, the qamis, the thawb, the jubba, all the things we've talked about of the Prophet ﷺ so far, including his turban, they are from the custom of the Arabs. He didn't start wearing them during Islam, and he didn't stop wearing them during Islam, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Rather, he wore them because it was the custom of the people in his time and that isn't a problem and if you want to wear one there's nothing wrong if you like wearing a cap wear a cap no problem if you like to wear a cap because it identifies you as a muslim wear a cap no problem i'm not telling you not to wear a cap but i'm saying that it's not a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the matter is one in which there is freedom for a person to choose since ancient times the arabs were known for wearing a turban and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most common form of headwear that he would wear Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the turban, as did his companions Radiallahu Anhum. In this narration of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Jabir Radiallahu An narrates the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered Makkah on the day of the conquest of Makkah while wearing a black turban. And we've already seen that in some of the other chapters mentioned by Imam al-Tirmidhi, that Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu when he entered Makkah, was wearing a helmet. And the scholars of Islam, they have different ways of joining between these different narrations. Some of them say that he wore a helmet and he wore a turban on top of his helmet. And perhaps the stronger of the opinions is that he wore a helmet in the beginning and then when things became calmer and the fighting was over and he entered into Makkah after the conquest had been completed, he entered into Makkah wearing a turban, having taken off his helmet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, says he did not wear it as a regular color, i.e. black nor was it something he wore for Eid or for Jumu'ah or for the gatherings, nor was it narrated from the companions. So what Ibn al-Qayyim here is saying, when you take all of the hadith, and Imam al-Tirmidhi only mentions the black turban, but when you take all of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, you find that the Prophet wasallam did not wear exclusively a black turban. Rather, the Prophet wasallam wore a black turban and he wore other colors, salawatullahi wasalamuhu alayhi. We hear in the 
subsequent hadith that the turban of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a tail. But in this hadith of the conquest of Makkah, we don't hear about the tail on his turban. None of the companions who described him on the day of the conquest of Makkah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described his turban as having a tail. And the tail is the, the part of the turban that runs behind the neck between the shoulder blades so that the turban would have a piece that hangs down behind the neck between the shoulder blades and again the Prophet ﷺ forbade it from being too long and if it is extremely long then it's considered to be isbal the same as having long trousers or a long waist wrap so the Prophet ﷺ forbade it from being too long but he would have a veil a tail that would run between his shoulder blades of his turban so the turban would have a part at the back that would run between his shoulder blades sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam so we find from this that he did not always wear a black turban but the black turban was the one that he was famously recorded as wearing when he conquered Mecca sallallahu alayhi wa sallamuhu alayhi and again from the hadith of Amr Huwairith radiyallahu an that I saw on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a black turban and in another wording, the Prophet ﷺ gave a sermon to the people and he was wearing a black turban. And this is the same occasion, because the black turban is only narrated on the conquest of Makkah, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said. Ibn Umar is the next hadith mentioned by Imam al-Tirmidhi radiallahu an. The Prophet ﷺ, if he wore a turban, would let his turban fall between his shoulders. And this, in the wording of Imam al-Tirmidhi, is weak, but it has enough support to make it an acceptable hadith. If we look at the other hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ would keep a turban that would have a tail that would sit between his shoulders. And then the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, the Prophet ﷺ gave a sermon when he was wearing a black turban. Now at this point, brothers and sisters, we should say, there is no authentic hadith about the virtue of wearing a turban or praying in a turban. Any hadith that you find that talks about the virtue of a turban is either extremely weak or fabricated. Lies against the Prophet And then we come to the chapter of the izar of the Prophet And this is what we're going to conclude the physical description of the Prophet ﷺ with. The izar of the Prophet ﷺ, the waist wrap of the Prophet ﷺ. The izar is a waist wrap. It's a piece of cloth that is a single piece, unstitched piece of cloth. It doesn't have leg holes like trousers. And you wrap it around your waist. And this was what the Prophet ﷺ is narrated from wearing. And we said that I didn't come across an authentic narration of the Prophet ﷺ wearing trousers, although there are narrations that indicate the permissibility of doing so. Those are trousers that are worn, the sirwal, that are worn underneath the qamis. There's, I haven't found a narration the Prophet ﷺ wore them, or an authentic one anyway, but I found a narration that indicates that it's permissible to do so. And the Prophet ﷺ would wear the izar. And the izar is the waist wrap. And from this is the first hadith that Al Imam at Tirmidhi mentions in this chapter Babu Maja'a fi Sifati Izar Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the chapter of what has been narrated to us about the characteristic of the waist wrap, the izar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Aisha brought out a upper covering that was thick and a thick lower waist covering and she said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's soul was taken when he was wearing these so it, there was a lower waist covering and it was of thick material that he wore Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is one of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wore and we said that it's not the only thing the Prophet ﷺ wore, but when he died, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, he died wearing a lower garment that was thick. Wa izaran It was made of thick, heavy material. 
And this is what he died in Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And then an Imam At-Tirmidhi Mentions a number of ahadith Prohibiting the izar from falling below the ankles And from this is the hadith Raise up your izar Because it is more pious and more lasting It is more pious and more lasting And the companion says Then I realized it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Who was saying this to me I.e. I was walking down the road And somebody said to me Raise up your izar Because it is more pious and more lasting And I turned and I realized That it was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I said, O Messenger of Allah It is a burda malha It's a, a burda Which is the kind of izar that came from Yemen That had two colors in it like a stripe that was black and white and it's as though he's saying this is a very humble piece of clothing it's not the kind of expensive posh piece of clothing that you would show pride in and then the Prophet Sallallahu said to him don't you have an example and he said I looked at him and the izar of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was halfway down his shin and we're going to talk about this to conclude this topic next time, insha'Allah ta'ala, and then talk about seeing the Prophet وسلم, in a dream bi idnillah ta'ala. That's coming in the next episode, insha'Allah ta'ala. Until then, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>